Welcome to the session in which we will discuss what is an audit program. Now, when you think of the, the word program, the first thing you're going to be thinking of is coding, coding a computer, not at all. An audit program is list of audit procedures. Simply put, a list of steps designed to help auditors perform an audit on a specific account or the entire engagement. Now, the program outline audit procedure. Simply put, you're going to see the program on the next slide. It's a specific steps in performing the audit. Simply put, it's like a roadmap. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to perform this step, that step. But those steps are outlined specifically. In the real world, companies use audit engagement software. Well, what is that? What's the software do? They help auditors determine the appropriate procedures. They show you which steps to perform an evidence decision to collect based on your audit engagement, aligning with the identified risk and predetermined audit planning strategy based on your strategy. Also, there's a separate audit program for each type of industry. For example, if you are auditing a software company, it will you'll have different steps than auditing a real estate company. It will be different than auditing a retailer, so on and so forth. And those steps will be different for, for example, account receivable will have their own audit program, inventory will have its own program, payroll, so on and so forth. Now, also, you can write your own program. When I was a college student, my professor, Michael Shapiro, asked us to write our own audit program. Now, he gave us an audit program, a sample of audit program. Then he gave us a sample company and he asked, and he asked us to do what? Prepare the audit program based on that sample company. The first thing I'm going to show you is an actual audit program so you see what we are dealing with. Let's go ahead and before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today and get started. So this is an audit program specifically. This is for audit program for the specific account of cash. So notice here you have the cash, you'll put the company name, the balance sheet date, and this is form AP10. You could download these audit programs from the internet. There's a lot of them. Okay, here's the instruction. The auditor should refer to the audit planning documentation to gain an understanding of the financial reporting system, so on and so forth. These are the audit objective for cash, existence or occurrence, rights and obligation. The audit objective cash physically exists and is owned by the company as of the balance sheet date, the other audit objective. Cash receipts and cash disbursements are recorded correctly as to the account, amount, and period, which is which will verify existing or occurrence, completeness, valuation, or allocation. These are the audit objectives. Now, then you're gonna have a list of procedures, and these are the list of procedure. the procedures. This is a, only, I have four steps here. There'll be like pages and pages of for certain account to audit them. For example, the first thing we want to do is explain significant fluctuation in the amount of the cash balance. So someone, we're gonna have to look at the difference in the cash balance from the prior year, and if there's a significant fluctuation, a change up or down, it doesn't matter. We need to explain that change. Who performed this MF, and where can I find this paper? A1, I can find the explanation. Step two, prepare or obtain from the client a listing of all cash accounts open as of the balance sheet date or open and closed during the period under the audit showing account number type custodian and the balance per ledger so the first thing you want to do if you're auditing cash you're going to tell the client give me provide me all your cash account even if some accounts were closed during the year i want to see them they'll give they'll give them to me i would say mf and you can find them in a2 paper a2 i'm just making this up three request the client prepared bank confirmation forms or bank custodian account used during the period under audit, including accounts that are closed. Maintain control of the account, conf maintain control of the bank confirmation form and mail directly to the custodian. Uh, what am I doing here? I'm sending bank confirmation. I'm requesting the client to sign them and send them myself, MF, and you can find those in A2, so on and so forth. The audit program is showing me step-by-step -step how, how to audit the cash account. Now we have a different 
program for account receivable, for inventory, so on and so forth. Again, don't think those are the only four steps. Just Google audit programs and you will see a lot of them if you're just interested in looking at some. Now we're going to go back and look at, look at this from an academic perspective. There are four key decisions in audit evidence. So the auditor will have to decide the right type and the quantities of evidence required to conclude that the financial statements are fairly presented. To determine this, we have to make four key decisions that are part of the audit program. And those four key decisions are choosing the audit procedures to implement. First, procedures. What procedures are we implementing? Determine the appropriate sample size. Okay, now we know what we need to do. How many units are we going to select? How many account receivables? How many uh, cash disbursements? So on and so forth. Selecting the items. How are we going to select the items? Selecting the specific items. Then, when are we going to conduct the audit? Deciding on the timing of conducting these procedures. I'm going to go over each step separately just to kind of give you a feeling what does it look like. This is what the audit program would include. First is the audit procedures. And I show you four audit procedures earlier, but basically an audit procedure is, is a specific set of instruction that outline the evidence an auditor needs to obtain during the audit. And I showed you, I'm going to show you another one again. These procedures are typically defined in precise terms to ensure that auditors can consistently follow these steps throughout the audit process. So if I do, if I perform those steps, you gave those steps to another person, we both come up to the same conclusion. So it's the procedures are the same. For example, let me show you a specific step again. For example, for cash disbursement, review the cash disbursement journal. Look at the cash disbursement journal within the accounting system. Now what you need to do, notice here, instruction, compare the payee name, who did we pay, the amount that we paid, the transaction date against. So we're comparing the the cash disbursement journal to the information provided by the bank, such as the online record of checks and electronic transfer process for the account. So simply put, what we're doing is we're looking at the uh, cash disbursement journal, cash disbursement journal, and we're comparing the cash disbursement journal information to the bank. And they should be the same in terms of who did we pay, when did we pay it, and the amount. The amount should be the same, the, the date should be the same. Compare those. This is the specific step. And anyone that read these instructions, as long as they know how to access the cash disbursement journal and they have access to the banking information, they can perform this step. That's great. This is the procedure. Now, how many cash disbursement journal are we going to select? The second step is the sample size. Well, how many? After selecting the audit procedures, we have to choose the sample size. We could choose one item. We could audit the entire population. For example, in verifying 10,000 record, we might choose 100 to test. Now, about how many units to select, we're going to have, we have 10 to 15 lessons about sampling. You can look at sampling, but for now, I'm giving you the big picture. Let's assume we selected 100 transaction. Now, is this a lot? Not a lot. It all depends on the on the on the client, and the sample size may vary due to factors like control automation. How good are their control? Is it automation or manual? The client characteristic. Is it a risky client? Not a risky client. Depending on the industry, expected errors. How much? How many errors can we tolerate? And this is what we'll discuss later on in the sampling and the required level of assurance that we are providing. So first we select the sample size, which is we call N. How many are we going to select? We selected 100, great. Now of the 100, how many, which 100 are we going to select? Items to select. So on the previous step, we selected N equal to 100. Now the question becomes which 100? Again, we're gonna have methods on determining which 100. We can select randomly 100. We could do it in a systematic way at a certain interval. We can stratify, stratify the population means, you know, large amount. We could separate the population into a large amount, medium and small size account based on the dollar value. And we have many other ways to select like monetary unit sampling, block sampling, many others which we'll talk about in the sampling lessons. For example, we could examine, you know, we're going to decide to examine the first 50 transaction from a chosen week, or we can select the 50 largest, for example, 50 in here and 50 there. We can select randomly. We can target certain transaction that we think they are mo most likely contain errors. It does not matter. We just need to find a way to select those items. Again, the program would help us. The fourth and the last step is the timing. When are we going to perform these steps? When? Well, well, the timing of the audit procedures can vary from early in the accounting period all the way till after closing. Several factors 
will influence when do we conduct the audit. For example, if we are conducting an audit for an SEC, for an issuer, well, the SEC mandate public companies to file their auditing financial statement within 60 or 90 days, depending on their size. Therefore, we have to finish the audit earlier so we can publish the financial statements. Audit effectiveness. Sometimes the procedure itself, and we'll talk about that later, will dictate when you should carry out that step. For example, certain accounts are best audited toward the end of the year, others throughout the year. Timing is adjusted to when evidence gathered is deemed most effective. And we'll talk about that later. <laughs> staff availability. Do we have people to conduct those staffs? Schedule of audit staff play a role in determining the timing. Now, for a company, what they do, they plan this up front. They plan or they should do that. And specific time and needs. For example, inventory counts are often preferred close to balance sheet date. Sometimes the account itself will dictate when you should audit that account. So the timing, it all depends. Again, the audit programs that the software generate will give you suggestions based on the industry. Let's take a look at a multiple choice questions from Farhat Lectures. Basic multiple choice questions to make sure we understand what is an audit program and what are audit procedures. Let's see. A list of the is called what and the which can also contain test, timing, and item selection and sample size. So basically, we have options such as audit procedures, audit program, audit objective, audit programs, audit assertions, audit program, audit procedures, and audit objective. A list of what is called what basically a list of audit procedures right we have we, we learn about audit procedures a list of audit procedures is also is called the audit program so i would say a the procedures a list of these procedures contain the program not a list of audit objective objective is what we need to achieve the objective are listed on the program like this is what we need to do we need to achieve the completeness assertion the occurrence so on and so forth those are the audit objective that's not the program itself. The procedures are the program. Audit assertions, not at all. Audit assertions will be there, but a list of audit assertion is not the program. The list of the procedures of the audit procedures is the program. A list of audit procedures is called audit objective. No, audit objective are separate. Audit objective is what we need to achieve. But the list of these audit procedures, the roadmap, all together, they form the audit program, which contains the test timing, item selection, and sample size, which will help us determine all of those. What you should what should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, true false, additional lectures, whether you are a CPA exam candidate or an accounting student. Invest in yourself. Good luck. Study hard and of course stay safe.